Hi there. My name is Alex Labarsky. I'm the founder of Science of Human Optimization, a company that works with some of the top functional medicine doctors in the country. And in this presentation, Unaging Structures for a More Personalized and Proactive System of Cost Focused Care, I'll do my best to answer some of the following questions. How do we extend human lifespan as much as possible, condense the disease of aging into a much smaller window, but then design a system that actually gets people to function at the very peak level of health expression in the moment and for the duration of their life? But before we talk about creating a better system of healthcare, I thought it might be fun to explore some of the inherent problems with this one. And there are many, but I'd like to highlight four. The first is that the system is almost entirely focused on the indefinite management of chronic disease. Second, the only time your doctor can access the money you've paid into your health insurance is once you already have a well-established, diagnosable, chronic disease state. Third, at $4 trillion per year, growing exponentially, the system is unsustainable by any measure. But worse, it turned our sickness and disease into a modern-day gold rush. And four, the system is fragmented. So you have your oncologist once you develop cancer, a rheumatologist once you develop arthritis, an endocrinologist once you develop diabetes, a cardiologist once you develop heart disease, and then, of course, you have your neurologist who's going to help diagnose your early onset Alzheimer's. This is the founding team. Uh, Dr. Jimmy Kilimanjaglu is a renowned biomimetic dentist specializing in oral optimization. Because last we checked, the mouth was directly connected to the rest of the body and plays a vital role in optimal function or lack thereof. Dr. Mitchell Kirk is a board-certified medical doctor. He's a doctor of osteopathy, doctor of optometry, he spent decades specializing in medical nutrition. He's a world-renowned pioneer in both functional medicine and anti-aging medicine. And not only is he the author of uh, Prescription for Long Life, Essential Remedies for Longevity, he is the embodiment of it. Clifford Locks is an investor, entrepreneur. His last company was part of a $1.2 billion acquisition, and he has a strategic interest in longevity, prevention, and human optimization. And like I said, my name is Alex Lubarski. I've spent the last 25 years in healthcare. And about 20 years ago, I was diagnosed with some really unpleasant health issues and could find no resolution in the established model. So I wanted to design a system that was more proactive, personalized, one that actually looked to get to the root cause of the chronic illness and resolve it before it turned into a health catastrophe. We work with a group of some pretty remarkable family nurse practitioners under the direction and training of world-class functional medicine doctors, best-selling authors, renowned scientists, world experts in prevention, longevity, and human optimization. And then we use a breakthrough in diagnostic technology called Integrative Genetic Solutions. And what it does is it takes all available information on what it takes the human body to function optimally and then correlates it with a person's blood work. It creates a very thorough report of any deficiency, toxicity, food allergies, inflammation, hormonal imbalance, anything that might interfere with optimal function from the DNA out. And then we assign one of our practitioners to our client. And it becomes their mission to be the world expert in what it takes this particular unique individual to function at the very peak level of health expression in the moment and for the duration of their extraordinary long life. So when we talk about expanding human lifespan as much as possible, what does that look like exactly? Well, this is Jean-Louise Calment. Uh, this lovely lady was born in France in 1875 and lived a total of 122 years and 164 days. Unless you think that she was a health-conscious vegan who drank wheatgrass juice in the morning and did yoga in the afternoon, Jean only gave up smoking when she was 117. And she was known to drink alcohol regularly. So we know that even in spite of our best efforts to the contrary, the human body can live to be at least 120. Fortunately, we in the United States lead the world in health and longevity. Unfortunately, is the third world. So we live like 15 minutes longer than people in Uganda, North Korea, Iran, Pakistan, Somalia. Of course, we're spending $10,000 per capita to achieve these very impressive outcomes. 
Well, it cost them like 13 seashells and a chicken. People in the civilized world, on the other hand, like Japan, for example, live into the late 80s or 90s, and then they die. And sometimes while executing a difficult move on the dance floor or the bedroom. So how do we get to the point where we have a healthcare system that's both unsustainable and inaccessible? Well, let me take you back to the early 1960s. Because back then, we were spending about $27 billion per year on our health care. And at the time, we were mostly thin and relatively healthy as a nation. And then in 1965, our government decided it wants to get into the business of health care with the passing of Medicare and Medicaid into law. And from that moment on, coincidentally, both the health care expense, along with the obesity epidemic, and all the related comorbidities began to grow exponentially. And then in 1995, for the first time in human history, we needed a trillion dollars worth of medical intervention for a small sliver of the world population that happens to be living here in the United States. So this begs the question, did we start becoming so sickly all of a sudden that we needed all of this medical intervention? Or is it because we started dumping all of this money into the indefinite management of chronic disease that we inadvertently turn disease into a very profitable and therefore desirable commodity? Well, to answer this question, what never happened in the history of mankind, and we did in a very short 30 years, we repeated in the following 10. Because from 2005 to, from 1995 to 2005, our healthcare system doubled to $2 trillion. And we have to assume that our health as a nation got twice as bad. And if at this point you have any doubt that your sickness and disease has been turned into some version of a blood diamond, then from 2005 to today, our healthcare system doubled again, and now we're at $4.1 trillion. And only two possible things can come out of this lamentable trajectory. Either we're going to run out of paper on which to print money to pay for this bureaucracy, or we're going to run out of people healthy enough to get out of bed in the morning. So this is what the healthcare system looks like. This is a schematic. Here you have 330 million people that live in the United States, the greatest country in the world. Uh, and uh, this is the everybody. And here you have our government. This is... Uh, uh, the everybody responsible for the health care of everybody else. So I think you and I are smart enough to understand that when you have everybody responsible for everybody, technically you have nobody responsible for anyone. And the way the system works is you have your employer that pays your salary. They siphon a portion of that salary to subsidize your health insurance expense. You're also paying a monthly premium. The only time a payment is triggered to your doctor is once you already have a well-established, diagnosable, chronic, and billable disease state. At that point, your doctor allocates just enough time to triage the condition and then send you back to work as quickly and inexpensively as possible. So you have everybody paying trillions of dollars in taxes to everybody. And here, you have everybody lobbying everybody to uh, influence how all of that wealth and power is allocated. Some of the top lobbyists in the United States, you have the uh, pharmaceutical industry, the number one. Then you have the insurance industry, number two. Uh, after that, you have uh, hospital systems, business association, and the like. And based on all of that influence, the government comes up with decrees. Basically, it tells your doctor what to do, uh, your insurance company what to do, your employer what to do and what not to do. So right now, there's over 2,000 mandates telling your insurance company what they must cover. Uh, so your monthly premium can inadvertently be paying for a sex reassignment surgery in San Francisco, a late-term abortion in Detroit, a tummy tuck in New York City, and of course, the unfettered access to all the emergency rooms throughout the United States, both for people who are here legally and otherwise. And then when you or your family need access to health care, the expense is growing exponentially, while the quality, the value, and the access is falling precipitously. So the next time you're going to send a check to your health insurance company, I just want you to be aware that you're paying for the systemic treatment of ubiquitous, preventable, and innumerable disease. 
And so all that can fit into the little memo section on the bottom of your check, where you actually record what you're paying for. Here's a simple acronym that's also easy to remember. The human optimization model I want to introduce you to puts you square in the middle. We assign the family nurse practitioner directly to you, and their job becomes to be the world expert in what it takes for you to function at the very peak level of health expression in the moment and for the duration of your extraordinary long life. They work under the direction and training of world experts in uh, prevention, longevity, human optimization. And then we do specialized testing to identify any deficiency of important vitamins and minerals, toxicity, heavy metals, parasites, xenoestrogens. And then we want to heal and optimize your system of digestion. In addition to that, we want to understand your genetics because your family history has a direct impact on your health in the moment and in the future. So if your grandfather had his leg amputated because of diabetic complications, like mine did, or if your younger brother passed away from colon cancer, like mine has, or if your aunt, your father's sister, has been dealing with a debilitating autoimmune condition virtually her entire life, does it necessarily mean that all of these genetics are going to find expression in me, my children, or future generations down this line? Well, fortunately, there's an aspect of medicine called epigenetics. And what it says is that not only do we inherit genes from our family, we also inherit lifestyle, environment, the way we deal with and interpret stress, uh, our nutritional habits. So genes are kind of like apps on your phone. If you leave them alone for the most part, they're gonna remain dormant. But if you keep poking at them, eventually they're gonna express themselves in whatever way they were ultimately designed. Well, I also had a grandmother who lived to be almost 100. This remarkable woman was an adult during World War II in Soviet Russia. She raised four children all by herself. My father was one of them. Uh, so this was a very wise, tough woman who um, uh, had a wicked sense of humor. And she was healthy, cognizant, and well virtually throughout her entire life. So how do we get these genetics to express themselves in me and my family rather than the ones we would prefer remain dormant indefinitely. So our goal is to keep you out of this $4 trillion bureaucracy, one that's fraught with perverse incentives. The only time it can actually make money is once it diagnoses you with some kind of a life-altering condition, orders a battery of invasive tests, poking and prodding as if it was an alien abduction, prescribes an expensive medication, performs a complicated surgery, admits you into the hospital, and then manages that condition for the duration of your life. What we want to do is practice something we call righteous disincentives. So if our goal is to keep you optimally well for the duration of your life, and we miss something, we don't address it well enough or fast enough, and you end up in the hospital, well, the first thing we're going to do is stop billing you. Because if our goal is to keep you well and we fail, we should not be rewarded for that failure. But perhaps more importantly, you have an advocate by your side. Someone that knows you exceptionally well from the DNA out, who cares for you in the very literal interpretation of that word, and who can speak on your behalf from a depth of knowledge and unshakable authority and get you out of there as quickly as possible and hopefully unscathed. The kind of people we're looking to work with, the avatar, if you will, are executives, CEOs, entrepreneurs, athletes, and moms. Because if your average person is a classic sedan, say, that goes out for a leisurely drive on a sunny Sunday afternoon, the entrepreneur, the mom, are more like a race car traversing the Grand Prix. They have the pedal to the metal, the engine is racing, the tires are screeching, they're shifting gears, sweating through their clothes, and they're doing this day in and day out, year after year. The difference between this race car and the entrepreneur, however, is eventually the car will pull into a pit stop. And there they'll change out the tires, make sure the brakes are working, and check the engine oil. Because under these extreme conditions, this kind of relentless stress, if you will, if the engine oil is low, even a quart or two, eventually what will happen is the car will overheat, and the engine explode. Well, vitamin D to the entrepreneur is what engine oil is to this race car. 
It's one of some 90 essential nutrients the body needs to function optimally. And if you don't know your vitamin D level, chances are you're depleted in this very important pre-hormone. The way to find out your level is through a blood test known as the vitamin D 25 hydroxy. And if your vitamin D comes back under 20 nanograms per milliliter, the first thing you need to do is fire your doctor. Because if your vitamin D is under 20 nanograms per milliliter, not only do you have a much higher chance of developing osteomalacia, which is a weakening of the bones, you also have a 75% chance of developing colon cancer. That's 75% chance of developing colon cancer if your vitamin D is under 20 nanograms per milliliter for an extended period of time. Well, 75% is eerily close to 100%. And imagine how disruptive something like that can be to your ability to run your business and live your life. So now, how do we make the system accessible and affordable to anyone who, who actually would want to participate? That's a great question. First, by establishing strategic partnerships with non-competing companies looking to reach a similar demographic, we can offset the cost of client acquisition, which can be significant, and then pass the savings on to our clients. And then by working with family nurse practitioners under the direction and training of world-class functional medicine doctors like my friend Dr. Jeffrey Life here, Rather than your standard allopathic medical doctor, we can again bring the pricing down quite a bit. Medical doctors, for the most part, spend their entire training and career identifying well-established disease states and then managing them with medication, surgery, and hospitalization. It's kind of like after the engine on the race car explodes, then you call in all the experts to try to put out the fire. But asking these fine people to check your vitamin D level and then make sure it's optimized it's too much. It's an overkill. It's kind of like watering your organic garden through a fire hose, getting a haircut with the jaws of life, calling in SEAL Team 6 to deal with a noisy neighbor. Family nurse practitioners, on the other hand, are amazing. First of all, they're naturally caring. And secondly, they're trained in how the body systems work, and they're uniquely qualified in keeping those systems functioning optimally. And then by using breakthrough diagnostic technology like integrative genetic solutions, we can save our practitioners a tremendous amount of time doing diagnostics and research. And that translates into further savings for our clients. And finally, we use virtual technology. So interviews can be done via Zoom. If we need to get blood, we can send the phlebotomist to the house. If we need to send supplements or the test kits, we can do that through the mail. So that makes infrastructure optional. Now we don't need the expensive office space. We don't need to hire staff and pay high salaries. And that allows us to offer a much more proactive, personalized system of human optimization, one that's actually focused on expanding human lifespan as much as possible, condensing the disease of aging into a much smaller window, uh, but ultimately getting people to function at the peak level of health expression in the moment and for the duration of their life, and all for the price of a cup of coffee per day. This is my friend, Dr. Erica Schwartz. She has a lovely center in New York City and happens to cater some of the wealthiest people in the world. Uh, her practice only has about 200 clients. She's not really looking for more and those that she has will never leave. The way she works is she charges $2,500 for the initial consultation. And then it's a thousand dollars per month membership fee. All the other products and services are in addition to that, of course. And if you can afford this kind of care, it is probably the best investment you can make because working with a doctor of this caliber, she can help you circumvent many of the chronic illnesses uh, we're told are inevitable and incurable. But if you're not rich and famous quite yet, what we'll do is uh, assign a family nurse practitioner directly to you who will work under the direction and training of world-class functional medicine doctors uh, like Dr. Schwartz, Dr. Life, Dr. Gundry, Dr. Kirk, uh, Dr. Rosenthal, Dr. Kilimidzagul, and so many other remarkable physicians we, have, physicians we have the pleasure and honor of working with and knowing. So we'll do the initial consultation, which will take about an hour. Uh, then we'll uh, order the blood works and the phlebotomist to the house. Uh, they'll take the sample, forward it to our lab. They'll put it through integrative genetic solutions, come up with a report with hundreds of recommendations. Then your practitioner will consult with some of these functional medicine doctors design an optimization program, 
and then get together with you, explain the results, and establish goals. This whole process could take anywhere from four to five hours, and there's that one-time onboarding fee of $750. So now you have full access to your practitioner who's going to spend the next 12 months studying you and figuring out the best way to approach optimization. They're going to order the most effective supplements, recommend the most powerful therapies. Uh, we're going to provide uh, <clears throat> ongoing education from world-class experts in longevity and human optimization. Uh, we're going to advocate for your longevity and optimal function. And then they're also going to do a quarterly follow-up where they're going to test those things they're actually interested in optimizing. So if your vitamin D was low, we want to make sure it's going higher. If you were toxic with heavy metals, we want to make sure we're reducing the toxic load. So this is a membership uh, program. There's $175 per month for a 12-month agreement. So now you're part in the elite network of like-minded people. You have access to exclusive events, cutting-edge technology, breakthrough science, world-class doctors, and you're actually proactively designing a legacy of longevity for yourself, your children, and future generations, and all for the price of about $5 and change per day. So if uh, through all of this effort, through all these remarkable physicians and uh, scientists and technology, we happen to extend your life by just one productive, successful, rewarding, fulfilling year. And putting everything else aside, let's say you make $50,000 per year, then you would have paid for the service many times over. Of course, our goal is to extend your life by decades. So my call to action is twofold. First, find out your vitamin D level and then make sure it's optimized. It is probably one of the most important things you can do for yourself and ultimately your business. And second, if any of the information I shared with you resonates on any level, let's find some time, get together, discuss it in more detail. I'd love to hear your thoughts and I would enjoy meeting you in person. Thank you so much. Feel good. God bless. Bye-bye.